in order to understand the thermodynamic derivation of law of chemical equilibrium the very first thing we need to understand is gibbs free energy or free energy so what is gibbs free energy gibbs free energy is capacity of any system to do work capacity of a system to do work all right now the um, notation for gibbs free energy is we write it in the form of g now uh, there is one thing with the gibbs free energy it depends on pressure and temperature depends upon pressure and temperature and we cannot measure the absolute value so absolute value of gibbs free energy cannot be measured but we can measure the difference or we can say we can measure the change in gibbs free energy that is delta g can be measured now for a uh, for any chemical reaction what happens if you have to uh, measure change in gibbs free energy so that is given by delta g is equal to free energy of product minus free energy of reactant so uh, for any chemical reaction change in free energy is given so this is uh, for any chemical reaction the change is given in such a way uh, we can also write it as uh, gives free and gives free energy of product minus gives free energy of reactant now since we cannot measure the absolute value of gives free energy so we need to convert it into something else so the new term comes is chemical potential chemical potential it is uh, nothing but free energy per mole chemical potential is free energy per mole and it is um, denoted by this symbol and the symbol is called mu so if we have to write down our change in gives free energy in terms of a chemical potential so we will write it as um, number of moles of particular product let's let's say we have a general reaction uh, plus so on x x plus y y plus so on let's suppose this is our general reaction now we have to write down our gibbs free energy in terms of chemical potential so we will write it as delta g is equal to gibbs free energy of product that is given by number of moles of x into chemical potential of x plus similarly number of moles of y 
chemical potential of Y and so on minus number of moles of A into mu of A plus B mu of B plus so on. So this is our Gibbs free energy represented in terms of chemical potential. So these terms these are chemical potentials of A, B sorry X, Y, A and B respectively. So this, this is when we represent the Gibbs free energy in terms of our chemical potential. Similarly, if we have standard uh, chemical potential, how do we represent it? First thing, what is standard Gibbs free energy? Standard Gibbs free energy is uh, um, Gibbs free energy of uh, any reaction at standard temperature and pressure condition. So this is represented by delta G naught, delta G of product minus, sorry, G naught of reactant. Now, similarly, if we have to represent it in terms of chemical potential, so we will take standard chemical potential here. So on minus that of reactant, that is A, chemical potential of A is B. So like that. Alright. So let's say this is our first equation and this is our second equation. So we are going to use these equations further in our derivations. Uh, the next thing that comes here is delta G values. All of us know that delta G is equal to 0 at equilibrium. That means uh, the Gibbs free energy of product becomes equal to that of reactants at equilibrium. That's why delta G is equal to 0 at equilibrium. And all of you must have studied this. Uh, a reaction is spontaneous when delta G value is negative. So there were two things. delta G is equal to 0 at equilibrium and delta G is less than 0 that means reaction is spontaneous alright now let us consider a closed system, closed system having a reversible reaction and let's say the reaction is A A plus B B plus so on to give you X X plus Y Y plus so on. Alright and let's say these are chemical potential of reactants. Similarly, mu x mu y are your chemical potentials of products. This is at constant temperature and pressure. Now we have to uh, we have to find out the change in free energy change in free energy of this reaction at constant temperature and pressure so if we have to write down the total free energy of reactant total free energy of reactant that would be number of moles of A 
chemical potential of A plus number of moles of B into chemical potential of B and so on. Similarly, free total free energy of products will be x mu of x plus y mu of y plus so on. So if we have to find out uh, change in free energy, so that will be change in free energy of reaction at constant temperature and pressure that will be delta G equal to total free energy of product minus total free energy of reactant and if we put the value of free energy in terms of chemical potential it will become x of mu x y of uh, mu y plus so on that is for products minus a of mu a plus b of mu b plus so on this one is for reactant now uh, this is this is the same uh, equation we had previously as what now at equilibrium our delta g is equal to 0 so putting this value of delta g in equation 1 what you are getting x of mu x plus y of mu y plus so on minus a of mu a plus b of mu b plus so on is equal to 0 all right now take the reactant term to the right hand side all right so what you will get you will get x of mu x plus y of mu y plus so on is equal to a of mu a plus b of mu b plus so on. Now there is one new thing. Chemical potential for constituents of a gaseous mixture are given by an equation mu is equal to mu naught plus r t ln a this a could be anything this is activity so it can be partial pressure or concentration anything that signify, uh, signifies as activity that can be used here so uh, this is nothing but chemical potential of constituents of a gaseous mixture is given by so here this is this mu is your chemical potential mu naught is your standard chemical potential R T R is your real gas constant, T is temperature and L and A. A is your activity that can be your partial pressure or concentration. Alright. Now, I am going to put, I am going to use this equation and make changes to the equation number 4. So, I am giving this equation a number that is 4. Now, if I write the the fifth equation in terms of uh, partial pressure let's say partial pressure that then mu becomes mu naught plus rt ln p all right and if i write this equation individually for all the reactants and products it would it will be written like this chemical potential of A will be equal to standard chemical potential of A plus RT ln partial pressure of A. So similarly, we can write this equation for all the reactant and products.
So let's say this is our seventh equation collectively. Now what we are going to do, we are going to put all these values to our equation number 4. So uh, I am going to write the equation number 4 again and then going to put all these equations. So our equation number 4 is x of mu of x plus y of mu of y plus so on equal to a of mu of a plus b of mu of b plus so on. Alright. Now if I have to put these values, uh, this equation will become x into mu x naught plus rt ln p x plus y mu naught of y plus rt ln p of y plus so on is equal to a of mu a naught plus rt ln p of a plus b into mu b naught plus rt ln of pb all right now the next thing is to take all the log terms on one side and chemical potential terms on the other side so very first thing i'll do i'll distribute the potential terms here x of mu of mu naught x plus y mu naught y plus so on and plus rt x ln p of x plus y ln p of y this is our react uh, product term similarly we will distribute the reactant term a mu naught of a plus b mu naught of b plus so on plus rt a ln partial pressure of a plus b ln partial pressure of b plus so on now i am going to keep the rt term on the left hand side and I'll take the remaining terms to the right hand side. So RT X ln P of X plus Y ln P of Y plus so on minus A ln P of A plus b ln p of b plus so on this is rt term taken on the left hand side now all the chemical potential terms i am taking on the right hand side so a mu not a plus b mu not b plus so on minus x mu not x plus y mu not y plus so on now By condensing the log terms, we'll get RT ln PX raised to power X into PY raised to power, this is capital Y, Y, so on divided by PA of A, PB of B and so on. This becomes our left hand side term and right hand, time, right hand side term will remain as it is. Now you see this, this equation in the very beginning when we were discussing chemical potential that time we had written an equation of standard Gibbs free energy in terms of standard chemical potential. So I'll show you here the very first uh, discussion we had so here we have given this equation number two so delta g naught is equal to uh, x into mu naught x that is standard chemical potential of x 
so this equation was uh, in terms of standard chemical potentials of your reactants and product so this equation i am going to use here so this whole term is nothing but delta g naught but there is one thing it is written in terms of uh, reactant minus product but here what we had we had uh, g naught product minus g naught reactant so it, here we will have a negative sign in front of delta g naught now if i take my rt term on the right hand side then i'll get px raised to power x py raised to power y and so on divided by p a of a p p of b and so on equal to minus delta g naught divided by r t all right so and if i take anti log then what i'll get p x of x p y of y divided by p a of a p b of b and so is equal to e raised to power minus delta g naught divided by r t now next thing that comes is this is nothing but chemical equilibrium in terms of partial pressure what does the law of chemical equilibrium says chemical law of chemical equilibrium says kp that is chemical equilibrium or equilibrium constant in term of partial pressure is equal to product of partial pressure of your products raised to stoichiometric coefficient divided by product of partial pressure of reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient so this is your chemical equilibrium constant in terms of pressure so using these two equation we can write kp is equal to e raised to power minus delta g naught by rt or similarly you can write this equation as delta g naught is equal to minus r t l n k p so this is the relation between delta g naught and that is standard gibbs free energy and your equilibrium constant this is derivation in terms of pressure but similarly you can derive an equation in terms of your concentration so uh, if you can remember we had a conversion of chemical potential here chemical potential was returned in terms of uh, your partial pressure the equation number 6 we have taken in terms of partial pressure and if we instead of taking this if we take chemical potential in terms of your uh, concentration the derivation we will get will be in term of kc kc that means your uh, standard sorry equilibrium constant in terms of concentration so i am going to write chemical potential in terms of concentration that is mu is equal to standard chemical potential plus rt ln c c is concentration so if i write this for all the reactants and product my combined equation will become rt ln c of a let's say this equation is number 14 
सो म्यू ऑफ बी इज इक्वल टू म्यू बी नोट प्लस आर टी एल एन सी बी म्यू ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू म्यू नोट ऑफ एक्स प्लस आर टी एल एन सी ऑफ एक्स म्यू वाई इज इक्वल टू म्यू नोट वाई प्लस आर टी एल एन सी ऑफ वाई और राइट If we put this equation in our equation number फोर and equation number फोर was x of mu of x plus y of mu of y plus so on is equal to a of mu of a plus b of mu of b plus so on. This is at equilibrium condition. All right. So now if we put these equation number 14 in our equation 4 what we will get x of mu of x not plus rt ln c of x plus y into mu not y plus rt ln concentration of y this is our product side and our reactant side will become a of mu of a not प्लस आर टी एल एन सी ए प्लस बी इंटू म्यू नोट बी प्लस आर टी एल एन सी बी और राइट सिमिलरली वॉट वी विल डू वी विल टेक द आर टी टर्म्स ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड सो विल गेट एल एन सी ऑफ एक्स इंटू इट्स सोशियोमेट्रिक ऑप्शन प्लस वाई एल एन सी वाई प्लस सो ओन माइनस ए एल एन सी ए प्लस बी एल एन सी बी प्लस सो ओन इज इक्वल टू ए म्यू नोट ए प्लस बी म्यू नोट बी प्लस सो ओन माइनस एक्स म्यू नोट एक्स प्लस वाई म्यू नोट वाई प्लस सो ओन एंड इफ वी शॉर्टन अवर लॉक टर्म्स वॉट वील गेट एल एन सी एक्स रेज टू पार एक्स सी वाई रेज टू पार वाई डिवाइडेड बाय सी a raised to power a c b raised to power b and so on is equal to this this is nothing but our delta g not as we have previously derived and a negative sign will come because the sum of chemical potentials of your reactant minus product is written here but delta g is gives free energy of product minus reactant so we are going to put a negative sign here let's say this equation is number 15 now if we further manipulate our equation what we get minus delta g not by rt and again c x raised to power x c y raised to power y and so on divided by c a of a into c b of b and so on equal to e is 1 minus delta g not divided by r t now all of you know this is nothing but your kc that is equilibrium constant in terms of concentration so we can say kc is equal to e raised to power minus delta g not divided by rt or you can also write this equation as delta g not is equal to minus R T L N K C. All right. So let's say this is our sixteenth equation and this is our seventeenth.
this is re, uh, deriving the equilibrium constant in terms of your thermodynamics so we are getting the equilibrium constants in terms of gibbs free energy all right so the two relations we have established uh, between equilibrium constant and gibbs free energy are given by delta g not is equal to minus rt ln kp that is equilibrium constant in terms of uh, partial pressure or delta g naught is equal to minus rt ln kc that is equilibrium constant in terms of concentration so if uh, we know the delta g naught value of any reaction we can calculate the equilibrium constant or if we know the equilibrium constants we can find out the value of gibbs free energy of that reaction